get ready for this guys because yeah. this is and will probably be the best job i've ever done i was kind of living everyone who is a football fan's dream of going to watch these teams and then support them i wanted to move on and talk about um eurofan now because eurofan we spoke about it previously i was a huge fan of it growing up and it got over 8 million views. I was having a look the other day. I wanted you to explain to people who aren't such a massive fan as I am what the concept of this series was. Get ready for this, guys, because yeah. this is and will probably be the best job I've ever done. <laughs> people called Copper 90 were putting together a show. And I previously mentioned about being in Edinburgh and I did a sticker album uh, show where I completed it. And that was the kind of whole point of it. I suggested this idea to a guy. He was like, well, actually, we've kind of got this idea of the Eurofan where someone travels around and watches Champions League football matches. And I was like, yeah, that's great. And they're like, do you like football? And I was like, love football. <laughs> so they added another element where for every match I would travel to, whoever the home team was, I would support that home team and then find out about everything that that club has to offer why the fans are passionate why they support that team who are the favorite players what's the city like and that's what i did so i traveled around for a whole season uh going to different home matches in the champions league started off at malaga went to romania to cluj went to support real madrid dortmund mm -hmm. Bayer leverkusen all of these uh, it's spartak moscow bonkers yeah. trip. i would then get the normally get the shirt hang out with the fans uh, have a translator, try and understand and just get amongst it. That was the phrase that was used yeah. a lot for, for Eurofan. And it was incredible because I'm a football fan. I'd be watching some of the best players in the world at their peak playing. And that's essentially what the Eurofan was. I was kind of living everyone who is a football fan's dream of going to watch these teams and then support them. And, um, and yet at the same time, I'm a massive Southampton fan. So mm. I would, I would take on board that team. I know that isn't the, the quickest or shortest summary no, I love it. of what the Eurofan was, but you kind of have to see it. I would be an adventure. I wouldn't have a ticket for the game. How am I going to get a ticket? That was yeah. what the episode was all about. And, um, yeah, I miss it a lot. I have to say, I miss it a lot. Oh, I loved it, mate. Was there an episode which you enjoyed the most personally? No, no, <laughs> there isn't. Because I was going to ask you, actually, what did you like about the Eurofan? Because yeah. I just rambled on about it uh, and what it was about. Every episode was different. Some were more challenging than others. We did it for two seasons. So if I went to go and support Real Madrid in season one, what were we going to do for 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 the, the next year? Yeah, because I've already done all of those things. So we mixed it up. We we met different fans. Um, <laughs> the, all right, one memory that, that 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 sticks out is just being on a blag. That's what mm. the Eurofan was about. We had a team of maybe four people traveled around, and and we would get to we'd go early morning, cheapest flight possible, <laughs> arrive, and then go right. You have got forty eight hours till the game, or you've got twenty four hours before the game yeah we've got to get there find something make uh make essentially magic happen make yeah. something happen and that was the adrenaline it was traveling around the city finding fans or going into a pub contacting people on twitter does anyone want to help out the euro fan etc cetera, etc cetera. so you never knew what was going to happen we turned up at in turin it was juve versus celtic celtic were already out of the competition and we get to the training ground and uh directors with me uh, funny, funny guy. Uh, if anyone's worked with a team before, he's the like w the weirdest, oddest, most <laughs> fascinating bloke called Alex Grazioli, Italian man, lived in New York. He spoke like this all the time. Okay, Tom, we don't know what we're going to do. Okay, so you have to make something happen. Very <laughs> intense guy. We're at the training ground. All the reporters are going through to the press conference where yeah. Antonio Conte was going to talk about the team, the lineup, how they were going to play. And I had a BBC pass that I always took on these journeys in the first season because I was thinking, well, look, if anything happens to me, say we get caught uh, doing something we shouldn't or what have you, mm. uh, I'd have that BBC pass like, I'm a journalist, I'm out of here. Not that I was, I just did a radio show. That was all <laughs> I did. And they said, well, why don't I said, why don't I see if I, this can get me into the press conference? So you imagine outside the training facilities where they got the security and everything. I just walked up, I've got a, a hoodie on, um, I had my Juve top underneath and I had, I was mic'd up 
And uh, I went up to the security guy, just showed the BBC. He went, prego, like, <laughs> let's just carry on. And I was like, oh my word, I am now walking <laughs> to the press conference, got up there. There's loads of people. And I think I'm going to get caught. I'm going to get caught. Mm. I'm going to get caught. I'm going to get caught. What am I going to do? Woman comes up to me, starts speaking in Italian. And I was like, ah, oh, excuse me. Like, cause I learned a couple of phrases every trip I went, uh, excuse me. Um, and she said, oh, you are from BBC Scotland. And I was like, immediately just well, that's right i turned from a 25 year old <laughs> into a 40 odd just like that's right um from bbc scotland and she said no one else has come from from the the scottish media and i was like oh it was a pretty heavy night so i'm now <laughs> lying about this situation she said well, well the press conference is going to start do you need a translator and i said uh, yeah that'd be great thank you so a press conference sky the whole media team are at the back Antonio Conte, Andrea Bizzali, I think I'm pronouncing his name right, the, the, the captain at the time, are at the front. They put a translator at the front of the desk as well. Every Italian question that was asked was translated into English. Oh, wow. Just for me. Honestly, <laughs> I thought I was going to get arrested. I genuinely was standing in this room. I've, I've blagged my way in. And then you've got this all going on. And I'm thinking, I'm feeling so guilty. So then I had to take out my phone, which is all I had, and pretend I was filming and making notes. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't have been there and press conference was now even longer because they had to translate everything <laughs> for me and then as Andrea Vizzali walked past and Antonio Conte I unzipped my top and went could you sign my yeah. shirt <laughs> <laughs> that's how I got Andrea Vizzali's uh, signature and then got the heck out that's a very magical moment for yeah. what the Eurofan was all about um, and a lot of the stuff we couldn't show uh, because we just couldn't film it. We, we, we recorded as soon as we landed till the moment we left, uh, hanging out with the fans. But the hardest thing for me, I think when I look back at it, was actually being emotionally invested in certain teams like mm. Atletico Madrid at the, at the Champions League final in Lisbon. I think that was 2013. I went there supporting Atleti. They play in red and white. Rocky Blancos, as it's called in Spain. I'm a Southampton fan. They play in red and white. That's yeah. how they ended up... Uh, playing in red and white atleti so there's oh, a really? connection there yeah they lost in the final and then they're like right tom right deco that's a uh, <laughs> she always used to say deco we're going to do a link now when the fans are exiting the the stadio de luis uh stadium and i've got to do a link and they're like be more upbeat deco <laughs> i just watched the team yeah and you've got fans shouting at me in spanish like telling me to do one and i'm recording and and i but amazing if you've never watched it it is ridiculous yeah. when i look back at it now but that wasn't just champions league football from that that took me to uh the mls to go on an american trip there it took me to bermuda for the island games and then it took me to the world cup 2014 in brazil where i was there for five weeks working with uh maya jama as my co-host poet vijanich um mm. Yeah, it's just, yeah, it, it, incredible. It started something, but my buzz for traveling was already there. But then every two weeks, I'd be flying off to a new destination and getting amongst it. That was the idea. Yeah, well, it was absolutely brilliant. It still holds up to this day as well, because in preparation for this, I just went back and blitzed as many as I could. And really? watching the Dortmund one just brought back pain more than anything to see the fans. It kind of made me realize, you quite don't realize when you're watching football every week and they've got that fake crowd noise and you listen to it and you just kind of forget there's no one in the stadium. But when you see it for yourself, that fan footage that you were filming, of the fans in the stadium roaring and you kind of go yeah it was absolutely amazing wasn't it and we can't do that anymore which 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 one Dortmund was that because there was there was two trips there was one that I had where they had to beat Real Madrid uh by more than three I think they had to score three goals they only got two mm. uh against uh Ica Casillas and I was next to the Gelbo van which is the yellow wall so if yeah there's any sports fans that's like th th they sing you'll never walk alone before the match it's a proper you know your oh, the hairs are stood up yeah it's a tingling moment and every time i'd go to a new stadium i'd be pinching myself going i would have never have paid for this on my yeah. own yeah. to come out here and be amongst it and the gelber van is, is just a yellow wall of, of dortmund fans there was that match they lost which was hard because I, I really fell in love with dortmund they're at they're, yeah they're, easy they're the to smaller do isn't club. it yeah the, 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 the smaller club and then the other one was against Malaga where they yeah, got Yeah, that's through. what it was. I didn't want to say Malaga just in case I tri uh, tripped myself up, but obviously you had such a strong relationship with the Malaga fans. Yeah. And you bumped into them, didn't you? And you were supporting Dortmund. And yeah, they didn't and, quite and, like and, it. 
And that's, I think, the beauty of, of, of football, whether you like football or not, and you're listening to this, is it's just those connections. Uh, the Malaga guys were, were called the Giri Army. So there are a lot of expats living out mm. in Malaga. And they took me under their wing. They were so excited to be part of it. Um, and uh, do you know what? We, we stole something from Soccer AM, oddly enough, <laughs> where they would walk up. Some of the, the, the fans in this pub would, would say their name and walk forward like the oh, old yeah. school. You the know, crossbar they challenge. call me Dave <laughs> or yeah. something. Or Redders. Um, <laughs> but I've, I've really got on with them. And they took, took, took us, the whole team actually, under their wing, um, sort of banging on about how I've got John Smith's here. You can get John Smith's on tap. I am the only pub in Malaga where you can get John Smith's on tap proper characters and then we went to Dortmund met up with them in the square and oddly enough that was the match for some reason I'd been to the the Dortmund fan shop and decided to take a gnome they they love garden gnomes in Germany yeah with a Dortmund car I took it into the stadium with me a gnome because <laughs> I'd have to film on my own so that was odd like the, before selfies were really a thing I'm there mm. at the ground annoying people just go yeah it's me the euro fan i'm in here i'm in the westfalen stadion uh i dean i do in a park now um and uh, and have a gnome with me and to watch the dortmund fans leave around me early they'd been moaning at me for like this is not your seat you're not sitting your correct seat and i was like jog on mate like it's a football match like enjoy it to malaga to lose in in injury time and to be one of in the little area where I was, maybe the ten percent of the Dortmund fans stayed for that mm. incredible moment. Wow! So I felt very privileged, and it is odd when you take on the identity of of, of a new fan that that I actually felt for Dortmund. Mm. I was like, well, that's well done to them. Uh, but at the same time, you know, I'm just watching Jurgen Klopp run and skid on the on the yeah. on the turf, and he's celebrating with all his Dortmund players. I'm then immediately feeling. Oh, I'm really sad for Malaga. This was their one mm. opportunity. So I, it was an emotional roller coaster. Yeah, it, it sounds it. Really it. was at times. Do you have a favourite stadium that you went to? Obviously, Signal Laduna Park must be up there. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a it's good old St Mary's, uh, yeah. Southampton? Uh, obviously, is is <laughs> oh cherished. Uh, it, it is actually a nice stadium. Um, doing match day hosting there, but I think the mad maddest day. I mean, the the, the Champions League final was was incredible in Lisbon. <laughs> It's hard. The Allianz Bayern Munich stadium is is amazing. Juventus stadium. There's a shopping center um, just underneath, so <laughs> that's good if you wanted to get a few nibbles uh, on the way on the way home. Uh, Schalke was freezing, um, but then again, I loved Romania Cluj. They were playing Man United, and yet it's barbed wire all around in certain areas. Mm. The Romanian fans, Romania um, is separated between uh, Hungary, Romania of, of old and the, the new Romania. So you have two sets of Cluj Cefre fans supporting the same team. Those that, are, that, that identify as Hungarian Romanian mm. and those that remain, uh, identify as just, just Romanian. And so you're singing two sets of songs um, that was iconic, but yet it was the smallest, oddest, yeah. weirdest stadium. That I couldn't pick one basically, I, yeah. I, because they're so each have their own unique atmosphere. Being outside the Bernabeu when there's the street, you couldn't move in the streets for mm. rail fans. Um, yeah, it's, it was a really tough question. I've been asked it a lot, mm. and and I still don't really have an answer. I should by now have an answer. 